first, Sam. Uh, I suppose, mate, it's now three from three. Like, you guys seem to have obviously such a consistently great record here. And with finals being such a close race this season, how important might a home ground advantage like this be going into the, you know, the TC September? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's been a happy hunting ground for us. Um, Frio travel, obviously their travel schedule is going to be really difficult and this would be one of their tougher trips. But, um, yeah, I was really pleased that the boys were able to play with um, with some confidence. And I think to be the team we want to be, you're going to have to get over the, the travel barrier. And I think the same of every team. We didn't handle it well last week down in Geelong. And, um, you know, I thought Fremantle played some pretty good footy today. Um, you know, maybe it was the edge we needed. I suppose the uh, big switch from defensive forward for James Sicily was obviously a really, really successful one. Was there any sort of inspiration to do it? Was there any conversations before? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, as coaches, we're always looking to maximise the talents of our players. And I thought he, um, you know, he probably wasn't competing quite as, as well behind the ball. He wasn't having a significant influence. And when you have a player of, of his calibre who's... Um, not as dominant as you would like. You know, we obviously have the, the scope to move him and, um, you know, he's just got an appetite to, to be in those positions and, um, you know, I was wrapped he was able to hit the scoreboard and, and have a good impact for us in front of the ball. I just want to mention Nick Watson as well. Has, uh, had his struggles with set shots this year, but to be able to smash that one in from, you know, the boundary when the game, you know, he's in the balance. I suppose how much of a confidence boost is that for him going forward? Yeah, I mean, he started off the season obviously just happy to have shots and then he had, you know, he probably he got hurt and missed a couple of weeks and I think in the last two or three games he's actually been kicking a goal well. Um, you know, he's had, even even the misses that he's had are really good shots. I think he had one on the far side today which was from a pretty much an unkickable pocket that was just touched on the line. I think by Kelsher again. Um, but I think he's... he's Goal kicking has improved, and now he's got some confidence to obviously play with the flair that we know he's going to bring over time. But it's still a first year, and um, it was a pretty important one that one. So, after last week, just to be able to, you know, you have the third quarter, just to be able to, I guess, mentally and psychologically, be able to sort of, you know, still have the belief to, to come back and, and win against another top four team today must be pretty pleasing as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, Fremantle, of course, is trouble. The way they play is difficult. It was a strange game. You know, we only had, I think we only had 313 possessions, 41 inside 50s to 45. It was a real grind of a game. And, and they, they've got this great run and flair and vibrancy to the game, which we were able to restrict. Um, but then they moved the ball with uncontested marks and they... And they they're very um, difficult to coach against. So um, I was wrapped the boys were able to, to take their chances late. They obviously missed a few shots at goal, um, particularly I think it was in the third quarter, um, that could have got, got them a, a bit further in front. But the belief our players had that we were close enough and that we know um, we put ourselves in winnable positions. We talk about it a lot, that we want to be a club this year that is putting ourselves in winnable positions. And we did that, and then we were able to handle the pressures of those final minutes to, to actually win the game. Talk about uh, Sisters, maybe we also put well uh, up there as well, and uh, we come um, down back. Um, just didn't also not just have those sort of swing man kind of guys where you can, you know, if you really need to change something, then you can sort of, I guess, take a pump with them, and uh, both of them came up today. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think there was a lot of moving parts today. It's nice to have it. I'd prefer not to do it. Um, it'd be great if you just take your hands off the wheel and let everything everything roll. Um, I mean, I think Fremantle are a very good side. They're, they're not top four for no reason. So we knew that we were going to have some challenges across the game. And um, I think Will Day's role was really important today. Um, CJ and, and Massimo um, did some movement between wing and back. So it wasn't, I mean, the, the big names are the ones that you recognise, but there's lots of our players who have got a great appetite to, to make the best in whatever position they're given. Um, you know, Connor Nash starts as a second ruck, ends up going on to Sarong for different periods of the game. So lots of our players were able to have an impact. And um, I know Sicily will rightly get the, the credit that he deserves, but there were a lot of players today who, who played key roles for us in, in helping us get a, a really hard fought win. How have you seen, I guess, the, just the, the, the guys being more comfortable in those positions, whereas a kick or two in difference going for the last few minutes, it just seems like they're a lot more comfortable in being able to you know, manage, that, manage that type of situation? Yeah, I mean, scenario planning is one of the one of the things that was down the order. When I started coaching, it was like down the order on, let's just get let's just get the basics right. And this year we've done much more work on it. And obviously the Port Adelaide game was a bit of a punch in the face as far as how far along we were with scenarios. And since then we've handled them better. We haven't won everything. We haven't got it right. I think um, I think Jai gave it back to Miki instead of the, the umpire today, which caused the free kick. So little things like that, you know, 
sometimes that's not going to end well. So we need to make sure we continue to grow in these areas. And next week we play, we play Collingwood, who've probably been the masters of it for at least a couple of years on being able to manage really close games and, and win an unbelievably high rate of them. So, um, you know, they're the benchmark and continue to be, but we're, we're making strides in that direction. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a dangerous team, aren't they? They're, I mean, I look at their midfield and there's just so many problems that can be caused. And I think Jackson is, is another one that you would add into that. I mean, when he kicked that goal and then he nearly he kicked, nearly kicked the second, it was like, oh, we can't forget the dominance of him as well. So, I mean, I think our midfield toiled away and it was a really good battle where neither team dominated for very long. And because of that, we ended up with a great game of footy. Um, uh, it would have been would have been nice if a few of our you know better plays would have would have come off and been rewarded with some some finished product. But I thought it was a little bit scrappy, particularly early from us. And they handled the conditions a little bit better. Um, but as the game went, I thought our pressure stood up, and um, particularly late, we were able to force them into enough errors to give ourselves chances. Uh, I haven't had the medical update um, just yet, but I knew at half time they said, oh, we're not sure, we'll give him five or six minutes, see how he goes, and we moved him up to the wing. Um, and he wasn't moving too well, and we knew Harry Morrison's been really good in the in the sub role, and it was a it was a quite a simple a simple swap for us. So it wasn't, uh, I don't think he was trying to come off. I think he probably could have kept playing if we really needed it. But um, in a game that's so tight fought like that, the safety of holding the sub versus pulling the trigger on it, we decided to go quickly and um, ended up paying off. Yeah, I think Kelsher, he, what he does is he adds effort and pressure into the front half. He's still 18 years old, so he still is making um, you know, plenty of progress in his learning. And I mean, Jack Gunston came down for us and you know, we, we managed him out of the team this week. And then he comes down, he supports him through his process, supports him through you know, everything from his goal kicking routine to you know, what, what time he's going to bed and have, having breakfast. And like, he's really coaching him in a really personal way, which is, which is giving him every chance because he's playing better better footy than we probably thought he would be at this stage of his career. He's a bit like the team, far from a finished product, but we like what we see at the moment. Just want to talk about, obviously, that game is Geelong. You guys are in such a great run of form, and then the game is Geelong is such a, I suppose, a big loss. How important was it to get a response so busily today and really get back on track? Yeah, I, th I think it, if we looked at our, you know, the season, Obviously started slowly, had some good had some good form, got to, got to the bye. Um, you know, we played West Coast over there and, and, and played pretty well. Then we go to Geelong and get a touch up. And then this game was, you know, in the calendar um, because it was a big, this was an important game for us because it keeps us right in the hunt. And if you look at the ladder, it's pretty close. And now it doesn't, it doesn't get any bigger than it's going to be next week. So we're going to have, you know, a Hawthorne home game against Collingwood. You know, I think every Hawks fan is going to be saying, OK, how do I get a ticket to that one and make sure they're there and they'll all be wearing their gold and yellow and make sure that we drown out that, that Collingwood crowd that we know has been such a strength for them. So because we've had this great block of footy and now it gives us a little bit of belief that we come up um, next week against a Collingwood side who they're going to need to win and we need to win. So I think we're all putting that one in the calendar already and um, some weeks you always have to move on from the from the win quickly to make sure you're looking forward. Um, I don't think it'll be too hard to move on quickly for this one because it's going to be a massive game. Can't wait.